Good afternoon. In this video, I want to deal with the issue of the uh, imminency of the rapture. And I was watching a video on by Jim, Gene Kim, and it seems these guys can't grasp the fact that the rapture, rapture is imminent. Uh, and this is, uh, where did you put this out? Uh, this is real Bible proof. Rapture explodes in this generation. Okay, very exciting. October 3rd, October 2nd, 2017. So, uh, it's relatively recent. And these guys are following up on reading, just reading the verse. Uh, let me just, uh, just start off here with uh, Kim. Um, and if you look at the Buckman Re Reference Bible, and Buckman in his note, this generation is a generation alive at the time of Israel becoming a nation again, 1948. Then he'll say a generation will be 100 years. They're not going to be alive in 100 years. So, what this nonsense is, they, they keep, keep saying the rapture is close. The rapture is imminent. And that what, what, what when these guys want you to do is they want to put some fear into you that the rapture is coming, you better get to work for Christ. This is all a fear tactic. This isn't about Scripture. These guys can't read the Bible. It's a parable explaining that when, you, when these, that generation who's going to see these things they can expect, because the, the fig tree would, would, would uh, ripen very quickly, and they can expect these things quickly to happen one after another. That's how you read the verse. The verse isn't there. They jump to the fact that if they see fig tree, they automatically think, well, we, it's a sign of Israel, political Israel, and stuff like that. It's not dealing with political Israel. It's dealing with the issue of, this, of a, a parable dealing with the speed by which these things are going to happen. All these guys have fouled up. It doesn't make any sense to about a generation. Now we're past the 70 year mark. <coughs> it says those people are going to see it. 100 years? That won't be alive. So, and they don't even catch their own mistakes. It just goes on and on and on. Uh, they get all excited about this. He's got dates on here 2028, 2018. Uh, let me see here, uh, Buckman here. This generation is a generation alive at the time of Israel becoming a nation again. Well, they couldn't be a 100 year generation then. If the length of a generation were 42 years, the figure of the time uh, of the generations in Matthew 117, Christ would have come back in 1990. Throw that out. Uh, if a generation is 70 years, as in Psalm 9010, which is what uh, Kim is looking at, then the second advent would be no later than 2018. That can't happen, because you have to have a seven years before that. So that's not going to happen. If a generation, quote unquote, is 100 years long, as figured in Genesis 15, 13, then the Lord will return no later than 2048. A hundred year long. Well, that generation is not going to see that. They, they won't be alive. Most of that generation will be dead, certainly. Okay, so this is the, this is the nonsense of trying to, uh, 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 you know, put this stuff ahead. So that means the, the, the rapture would happen 20, uh, 40, uh, 41, seven years ahead. So you, this is the, this is the, the quickness of the appearance of these events, not the idea that's doing Israel and then seeing the nation of Israel back and in and dating. Well, it's got to be a generation, seventy years, hundred years. We read, read the passage now. Learn the parable of the fig tree. Okay, so they see fig tree and say, "Oh, because the, the fig tree is constantly as is, is the, uh, the political sense of uh, Israel, political Israel, and the olive tree is for spiritual Israel." When his branch is yet tender and put it forth a leaf, you know the summer is not. He's just giving you a simple explanation of, of looking at a fig tree. And they would understand. Say, look, when you, you see how quickly th the figs come. And that's it, the speed by which this is, this is going to happen. So likewise, likewise ye, when ye, ye, these people, shall see all these things, what things? All these things listed before all those verses. Sign of man in heaven, the sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light. So those are the things you should see. Uh, see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. What is the Lord returning? Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour, that's the second advent, know with no man, know not the angels of heaven, but my father only. And then he talks about, as in the days of Noah, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man be. 
Okay, so uh, for as in the days that were before the flood, that were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah, ate, Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them away. That's the suddenness. That's how suddenly the second advent is going to come on people. All these signs, and he's telling this generation to beware of that. It is not referring to the nation of Israel in 1948. And then... Uh, then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, the other left. Watch therefore, for you know that what hour your Lord doth come. Know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would, he would, uh, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready for in such an hour uh, as you think not the Son of Man cometh. This is not the second advent. So much second advent. And those people are removed. That's, that's talking about the unbelievers being removed there. But well, let's, here's, uh, I'll just, you know, uh, link it to that uh, video here. And uh, he's in about 17, he's got all these dates up. But they keep saying the rapture is near. We can need to see that, uh, that he's trying to set outside promises. The rapture is imminent. And they keep going to this verse and misreading the verse. The verse isn't speaking about Israel as the fig tree. It is speaking about a simple analogy a, a, a lesson that they should learn how suddenly, when they see all those events appearing, though how suddenly all, the Lord's about to return. That's why no one's going to know the day and hour, because these events are going to, are going to, are going to be crapping so quickly uh, that uh, it's going to, they have to watch be, and be ready. But we'll look at 11.30, uh, 20, about 11.39 in the video. Well, that's definitely Egypt. The Jews lived in a foreign land as strangers. They were serving somebody, and they were being afflicted as slaves. So that's definitely Egypt. But notice how long, 400 years. What is this 400 years? Look at verse 16. I mean, look at verse 33. So likely, likewise ye, when ye, she, when ye shall see all these things, what things? All the things listed in the earlier verses, in the uh, Matthew 24, those things. When they see those things, then they know that the uh, that the Lord's returning. But in the what fourth generation they shall come hither again. So you'll notice right here that Genesis chapter 15, 100. He's got 2018 up there. That's over. Okay. Because the rapture would have happened uh, 20, uh, 2011, right? So then you have what left with 80 years. You got 80 years up there. Uh, I don't know where he gets the 80 from. Uh, uh, Buckman has 100. 2028. 20, this is where these guys are coming from. This is where breakers come from. Now these guys come from there. Buckman come from. They they, they don't get they don't get it. And even Rush, uh, 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 have these in fact the rapture could happen any moment. And you're trying to set outside parameters. We have no more time than this. No more time than that. But the reality is, Matthew 24 is not talking, in 32, verse 32, is not talking about Israel and the nation of Israel. That's what they're looking at. They're looking at, and then, you know, he's got, he's got to think 80 years, 100 years. Well, that generation would be gone in 100 years. <laughs> that generation, the normal generation is like 70 years of survival. So, you know, he'll go, he goes on. But this is how you get off base, by looking at, not reading correctly and just being, he even says most, most Bible people, what, say this is the, this victory is Israel, and they're wrong. They're wrong. This has nothing to do with Israel. This has to do with this generation. And the parable of the fig tree is that when you see about the the uh, the, uh, the figs about to go, you know it's summer. That's when they would harvest them, May and June. He gave an example of the speed by which these things be ready. Be ready. He's not talking about the nation of Israel and that, well, we only got to so much time because the, the, the church, you know, was, can't go this much further and this much further. The rapture can happen any, any day, today. That's the message. 400 years equals one generation. It says 400 years, that equals to four generations. So a generation could be 100 years. Okay, so now he's got 100 generations, 100 years. No, no, no people survive 100 years. That generation's gone. You're gone. There's very few people who survive. And he's saying this generation who sees these things are going to be alive. Can't be 100 years. So they're running out of time. They're running out of time with this nonsense. Because they got the wrong view of that verse. Incorrect reading. So if a generation is 100 years, we go 1948 plus 100, and the date could be this. 
2048. 2041 would be the rapture, according to that view. But 2048, 100 years, they say uh, that, uh, 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 that generation has to be a lot. No one's 100 years. Uh, yeah, but ain't going to be alive 100 years old. But it doesn't change the fact that it's going to be in my lifetime, see? Yeah. <laughs> or another one. Look at the book of Genesis again. It has to do with the generation 1948. Not the fact that life. It's talking about the generation of 1948 when they see that these things, not, not the fact that we're still, we're still here, uh, alive. That generation, when, that, when the fig tree was supposedly uh, 48, 1948, that generation who saw that, saw that creation, they're the ones have to be alive uh, at the time of the second advent. Not us. I mean, that's not the issue. Chapter 5. Or it could be this. Genesis chapter 5. I don't know if creationists know this. They should. One of the greatest evidences of evolution is they try to prove a young earth. But when you try to prove a young earth, then you can see that you're not too far, actually. Because when they try to prove a young earth right here, what they do is this. They mention that the magnetism of the earth is that it's weakening. And actually, when you go by the rate of how the magnetism is getting weaker, you know how much the earth is younger than? 10,000 years. If, if it went beyond that, the mag magnetism would have become so weak that the planet would have been gone. We would not have existed. So here's the thing. If that's the case, then you can see we're not too far ahead throughout the past several thousand years of human history. That's good. So I'm not saying this. So even if you don't believe all this, even scientifically, scientifically speaking, you can see we're not too far. And creationists believe this. I'm saying every single creationist believes this. They use this as one of their greatest evidences against evolution. Okay, um, let's look at Genesis chapter 5 and verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat what? Methuselah. Methuselah. Do you know what Methuselah means? That name means? When he dies. So a particular person, right? So when he dies, what? God's judgment. It shall be sent. What did God say about the coming of the Son of Man? Likened to the days of Noah. And we see here this particular generation when he dies, what? It was sent. So it can either be this. If this one, this 100 years is not going to make it, it could also mean this one then. It could also mean this one. That there is a particular generation in the days of Noah. And when that, pers when that person dies, whoever was there in 1948, when that person dies, what? It shall be sent, the second coming of Jesus Christ. So here's the thing. We don't know how long the generation is. I don't know how long the generation is. And generations are ending. It's basically, basically they're running out of generation. Now they've got to go to it. Some individual, some individual dies. The rapture is not based on any of this nonsense. It's based on the fact there's nothing prophetic has to happen before the rapture occurs. There's not one prophecy has to be fulfilled before the rapture. All these guys went to Matthew 24 and misread it. All, the, all that all the, all the 32 was talking about, learn the parable of the fig tree, learn, learn the lesson of the, of the fig tree, is when, it, when you see it, some is near. And he's saying, what, look at the events all preceding Matthew 24. That generation who's involved in those events are going to see the second advent. That's what he's telling them. And it's going to be very sudden. Very sudden. That's why they don't they, they open on the time of the day and hour, because everything's going to be so messed up in the uh, days and stuff. All this stuff they're talking about here is nonsense. Absolute nonsense and misreading of Scripture. So, a ba hundred years. So, basically, or oh, this is not going to go into some unknown individual dies. And then, this is all second advent thing. And that's it. You can't know. And they keep trying to guess. And trying to keep a set of parameters. Well, you don't have much longer than this. So, you better get to work for the Lord. As if the whole idea of motivating people to work for the Lord is, is the judgment seat of Christ. Not the idea. Well, you're running out of time. 
That rapture's coming. You know, oh, you think you can get, you think you can get out of working for the Lord, but the rapture's coming. They use the rapture like a club instead of a great hope. These guys want to beat you over the head with it and make you feel it. Oh, I better get to work now. The Lord might be coming back to the, uh, next year. You know, that's breaker. I imagine he might come this year. Yeah, he might come today. Oh, you better get excited about getting work for the Lord. You know, if you don't, you know, don't think you can, you can, you can slack off. Don't think you can slack off. He's coming, so, you know, he, he might come this year. He might come next year. He might come the, Hey, he can come today. That's what you're supposed to do with the rapture. All this is nonsense. It's all false. The fig tree is simply a, a, a lesson to learn from a sign of the quickness and the suddenness of the appearing of, of, uh, in the second coming. It has nothing to do with timing it. But these are all the possibilities I'm going to show you. So even though we don't know how long this generation is, we do know one thing. You don't know anything. Then. All this is nonsense. All this is nonsense, meaning lots of nonsense. But they'll keep using it because they keep misreading verse 32, thinking it's referring to the nation of Israel. And it's not. It's a simple parable dealing with the suddenness of the growth of the tree. That's what it is. You learn lessons. God, Lord would use lessons all the time from nature. He said about the, the, the red sky and stuff like that. He says, you know, you see that, you, you see the, the, you know the times, but you don't, you know, you, you see the uh, natural signs, but you don't know the, the uh, prophetic times. So this is, this is a guy who's fouled up, following Ruckman right off the cliff, and uh, basically mis misstating what the imminency of the rapture is. There's nothing in about the generations there that has to do with the nation of Israel. It's a simple parable explaining to the Jews who's going to see those signs that you see in earlier verses. That generation who sees those signs is now saying, take a lesson from the, from the fig tree, and the fig tree, what? It blossoms quickly. When it comes, they get, you know, you see the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the fig, you've got to harvest them quickly. When that happens, you know the Lord's coming quickly. That's what he said, he's saying. That's what he's saying there. It's nothing to do with the nation of Israel. But they're going to keep repeating this. You know, and they, they, he's got a whole footnote on this, and they keep repeating, well, it's now it's 100 years. You know, that, that generation wouldn't be a lot. So you have to read what's there. I know it's easy, the parable of fig, the parable of fig trees are used as parables. Olive trees are used as, as, as metaphors and as, uh, uh, you know, uh, so there is, but you have to use context, understand the correct context. Sometimes it's just explaining a sign. And that's what this fig tree is being used here, as a sign of the suddenness of the appearance of the Lord, of the Lord Jesus Christ in the second half. It is not referring to the nation of Israel in 1948. And all these guys, but all these guys, they, just, they had this idea, you know, you only have, you know, you're trying to, you write the, the video and the camera says, oh, you only got so much time, you know, you better get, you people are lazy, you better get to work for the Lord. The, the rapture's not made to use as a club over people or pride. It's, it's to give them a blessed hope. And you know, all these guys that get out there, the rapture's going, you know, you know not that's imminent. That's the best thing. Say, look, you don't have tomorrow. You got today. That's it. That's all you got. You better work for the Lord today. Because you don't get tomorrow. Their idea is you got the closest to the rapture. It's coming. So you better start working for it. No, you work for it all today. You got one day at a time. The rapture can happen today or your death can happen today. Those are two, two realities. Those people, those young kids were killed uh, in the high school a couple of days ago. They didn't know that was their day the last day. No one knows what day, what day is going to be the last day. You got one day at a time. You don't get tomorrow. No one has tomorrow. That's one thing we learned. The death has no age, you know, respect of age or anything. You get one day, that's it. But these guys are misrepresenting what that, that verse is saying. The fig tree does not represent the nation of Israel there. It represents a simple uh, explanation of the suddenness. That's what the fig tree represented, the suddenness there. And all these things, looking at 1948 and trying to find out, well, this generating thing, and then looking for a person that you don't know exists, like Methuselah, and say, oh, well, it could be like that. Misreading scripture. Misreading scripture and denying the imminency of the rapture. You don't talk about the rapture being close. You talk about the rapture being imminent. It could happen today. Amen. Thank you.